consider two mutually exclusive projects and we have given the cash flows from project A and B for four years. Whichever project you choose, if any, you require a return of 11% on your investment. If you apply the payback period criterion, which investment will you choose and why? If you apply the discounted payback period criterion, which investment will you choose? Why? If you apply the discounted payback period criterion, which investment you choose and why? If you apply the NPV criterion, which investment you choose and why? If you apply the IRR criterion, which investment you choose and why? If you apply the profitability index, which investment you choose and why? And last is based on your answers in A through E, which project you finally choose and why. So firstly, we have to calculate the payback period. To calculate the payback period, we have to find the accumulated cash flows. In zero time period, the accumulated cash flow will remain same 3,64,000. In the first year, we have received 46,000. So minus 3,64,000 plus 46,000, that is minus 3,18,000. In the next year, we have received 68,000. Minus 3,18,000 plus 68,000, the answer is minus 2,50,000. In next year, our net cash flow will be minus 1,82,000 and last year it will be 2,76,000 so our payback period will be between 3 and 4th year to calculate the exact number of years we will use the payback period formula that is 3 plus 1,82,000 that is the amount that we have uh, recovered and we have seed 4,58,000 in the next year. So answer is 3.397. That will be the payback period of A project. We will perform the same procedure on B project. In the zero time period, the cash flow will be minus 52,000. In first year, we have received 25,000, so our net cash flow will be minus 27,000. In next year, we have received 22,000, so net cash flow will be minus 5,000. And in next year, it will be 16,500. So our payback period will be between two and third year. So the payback period according to formula is two plus 5000 that we have to recover and 21500 that we have received in the next year so the answer is 2.232 so the payback period of b project is less than project a so we will accept project b next we will select project a or b by using the discounted payback period criteria and to calculate discounted payback period firstly we will find the present value of the cash flows and then these cash flows will be used to calculate the accumulated cash flows and these accumulated cash flows will be used for the selection of the product we will discount all cash flows by using 11 percent as it is given in the question at time zero, the payment will remain same, that is minus 3,64,000. In next year, 46,000 divided by 1.11 raised to power 1, that is 41,441. In next year, 68,000 divided by 1.11 raised to power 2 so the answer is 51,190 then 68,000 divided by 1.11 raised to power 3 49,721 and last year 
फोर लैख फिफ्टी एट थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाय वन पॉइंट वन वन रेस टू पावर फोर सो द आंसर इज थ्री लैख वन थाउजेंड सिक्स नाइंटी नाइन and we will calculate the accumulated cash flows by using these present values at zero time period it will remain same that is 364000 in next year we have received 41441 so our accumulated cash flow will be 322559 in next year we have received 55190 so our accumulated cash flow will be Two lakh sixty-seven thousand three sixty-eight. In next year, we have received forty-nine thousand seven twenty-one. So our cash flow will be two thousand seventeen hundred six forty-eight. And last year it is eighty-four thousand fifty-two. so discounted payback period will be between third and fourth year so it will be 3 plus 2 lakh 17648 divided by 3 lakh 1699 so the answer is 3.721 yes we will perform the same calculation on b company at zero time period it will remain same that is minus 52000 in first year it will be 22522 in third year it is 17855 in next year it is 15720 and last year 11527 So net accumulated cash flow remains same in zero time period fifty two thousand twenty nine thousand four seventy seven outflow outflow eleven thousand six twenty one and inflow of four thousand ninety eight that is positive cash flow. So our discounted payback period will be between second and third year. So it will be two plus eleven thousand six. Twenty one divided by fifteen thousand seven twenty, so it will be two point seven three nine. Again, the discounted payback period of project B is less than from project A, so we will accept project B. Next, we have to decide about the project A or B by using the NPV criteria. NPV is equal to initial investment plus present value of cash flows so npv of the first project is equal to minus 364000 plus 46000 divided by 1.11 Raise to power one plus sixty eight thousand divided by one point one one raise to power two plus sixty eight thousand divided by one point one one raise to power three plus four lakh fifty eight thousand divided by one point one one raise to power four. so the npv is equal to 84052 for b npv is equal to minus 52000 plus 25000 divided by 1.11 raised to power 1 plus 22000 Divided by one point one one raised to power two plus twenty one thousand five hundred divided by one point one one raised to power three plus seventeen thousand five hundred divided by one point one one raised to power four. So the NPV is equal to. 
15,627. So the NPV of the A project is higher. So according to NPV, we will accept project A. Next, we will calculate the internal rate of return and internal rate of return is equal to To calculate the internal rate of return, we will use two different discount rates. At one discount rate, the present value should be less than from the actual present value. And at second discount rate, the present value should be higher than from the actual present value. I have tried different discount rates and I have find that at 11% present value is 4,48,052 and at 20% it is 3,45,779 and actual present value is 3,64,000 that is our initial investment. So this will be named as IL and this will be present value L. 20% will be named as IH and its present value will be named as present value H. We will put these values in equation to find the internal rate of return. So IRR is equal to 0 0.11 plus 0 0.20 minus 0 0.11 4 lakh 48052 minus 3 lakh 64000 divided by 4 lakh 48052 minus 3 lakh 45779 so by solving we will get IRR that is equal to 18.14 percent for B project I have calculated that at 11 percent present value is 67,627 and at 30 percent present value is 48162 and actual present value is 52000 that is our initial investment 11 percent will be named as il and present value will be named as present value l 30 percent named as ih and its present value will be present value h so we will put this in IRR formula, IRR So the our final answer is 25.29% Normally the higher internal rate of return is considered better so by using the internal rate of return we will select project b as it has higher internal rate of return lastly we have to calculate the profitability index and it is equal to 1 plus npv divided by initial investment For project A, profitability index is equal to 1 plus 84,052 divided by 3,64,000. So it is 1.23. For B project, profitability index is equal to 1 plus 15,000. 627 divided by 
52,000 that is equal to 1.30 normally the higher profitability index values are considered better so according to profitability index we will accept product b if we conclude our findings we will accept product b by using payback period we will accept product b by using discounted payback period we will accept product b by using irr and we will accept product b by using the profitability index however according to npv criteria we will accept product a that yields higher net present value as an npv is considered a superior measure than the other capital biting measures so we will accept product a as it yields higher net present value